The Flux models for generating images have been out for days now, yet somehow we haven't seen IP adapter or control net for it. While it's tempting to wish for everything everywhere all at once with zero effort, there are still some exciting tricks we can use in Comfy UI to enhance our image generations. Techniques like image to image and integrating large language models can take our creations to new, weird, and wonderful places, for example. But how does all that work? Step into my rather nerdy burrow, dear friend, and I'll share a few of those secrets with you right now. As you'll remember from my last video, you can get various Flux workflows to start with from Comfy UI examples, so start off with one of those. To use these workflows, you'll need to have Comfy UI installed, so if you haven't done that already and you do need more help, do check out the links in the video description. It's really easy and shouldn't take you longer than about five minutes. If you do already have Comfy UI installed, remember that support for this model is new, so older versions of Comfy UI won't have the new features and you'll see errors. Here in Comfy UI Manager at the bottom of the little window there, you can see the version of Comfy UI I am using. If you've got an old version, try clicking the Update All button and that should keep you up to date. And of course, don't forget to restart when prompted. When opening any workflow in Comfy UI, you may get messages about missing nodes. And here, install missing custom nodes is one way to do exactly that for any workflow which says it has missing nodes. OK, back to the workflows then. You've got a couple of options here, dev or schnell. The outputs I'm going to be creating today will be using their dev version. If we scroll down, we've got some new bits as well, a simple to use FP8 checkpoint. The difference between the two is that Schnell is great for creating images in just four steps, but Dev can create even better quality images. They do have different licenses though, with Dev being non-commercial and Schnell being Apache. Licenses always confuse me, but it seems to say here that outputs are okay for commercial use, so I should be okay including them in this video. All you need to do here is download that one checkpoint file and then drag the workflow into Comfy. While it's not as good as the full model they've got here, FP8 degrades the quality a bit, so if you have the resources, use the full official 16 bit. It is great for those with lower end hardware. OK, so let's do that then. I've already downloaded the checkpoint into my model's checkpoints directory. So let's take that workflow and drag it into Comfy UI. Scroll out a bit. Now, if I was to run that, it will, of course, generate the anime style image. But you might also have noticed a couple of small changes to the original. First up, you can now use the standard checkpoint loader. There is also a new flux guidance node to simulate CFG, and it's using the standard K sampler, though be sure to keep the CFG in that one to one. Adding new nodes to any workflow is as simple as a double click and then search for the one you want. And if you're looking for more help on how to customize any workflow, do check out my beginner's guide linked in the video description. OK, now we're up to speed. Let's take a look at things like image to image and using large language models to help with our image generations. Image to image first then, and you might have noticed that I like colors and groups, so I've used lots of them here. There are also a couple more new nodes, such as Model Sampling Flux and also the Clip Text Encode Flux. Model Sampling Flux here in purple has some values you can change, but these are the defaults and work well. I've not really got the hang of what they do and why I'd even want to change them yet, but well, there you go, there's some options to play with. Clip Text Encode Flux is a text input node which both splits out the options between Clip L and T5 XXL, as well as providing that Flux Guidance option we saw before built in at the bottom. To start with, I'm prompting for Anime Art Style Person for the style to change of the input image. In order to modify the original text to image workflow and make it into an image to image version, all you really need to do here is input an image latent instead of an empty one, which is exactly what this image group does here. Just above, I've added a latent input switch from the Comfy Roll Studio. Notice how you can see where the various nodes came from by their little tag at the top, which um, you can actually set over here in Comfy UI Manager there where it says Badge Nickname. 
The little fox icon just means that it's built in and so you don't need any custom node installs to get that. Now the nickname is generally correct, but node conflicts mean this isn't always the case. Anyway, with the switch set to one, it will use the empty latent. So that's basically just text to image, whereas set to two, it will be running in image to image mode. Over to the side here, I've also got a bunch of nodes for doing maths and an example case where the node badge isn't correct. The get image size node isn't from YOLO and I don't even have that installed. In fact, that's from the stability comfy UI nodes, but hey, um, that's where notes come in handy. There's probably a node which does this already, but just doing this maths is faster than for me trying to search one out. Oh. What's that? Why am I doing all this maths? Well, why would you not just do some random maths in a workflow? Oh, I see you prefer things that actually do something. OK, well, as you might have guessed already, not all images have good sizes. And like our good friend empty SD3 latent image, we want multiples of 16. This image of Bill Clinton here I've cropped down to 2299 by 3000 for this very purpose. Now, first up, a resolution like that is above the 2K limit for getting reasonable images out of Flux. You might get lucky, but for the most part, resolution wise with Flux, you can generally go down to around 512 by 512 and up to 2048 by 2048. And of course, the larger your image, the longer it's going to take to generate. So you'll often want to shrink those down. However, watch what happens if I bypass these maths nodes here and just do the typical 1.25 scale so I can go up there and bypass group nodes. Cool, the image looks great, but hold on, if we zoom in a little bit, what we've got all these strange pixels and things going on around the border. What's going on there? Well, that's because of the resolution. So that's what I'm doing here with these maths nodes. We can set group to always, and then if I run it through again, then this time we get a much better image. It hasn't got all those issues. So basically it's doing the same thing as the empty SD3 latent image, making sure it's a multiple of 16. So in this case, 992 by 1296. And now when we zoom in and take a look, all those issues around the border have gone. One final and very important note about using image to image is the denoise. If you've used stable diffusion before, you'll probably be used to much lower denoise values than you need with flux. For this photo to animate example, watch what happens when I set the denoise to 0.75, which is typically quite high. As you can see, it hasn't really gone very anime at all. It is of course, a little bit more similar to the original. But if you want to do this, if you want to change things from photo into anime, you will need to have a much higher denoise. There we go then, another example on 0.85 denoise. Definitely an anime style and it's kept the flag in the background, which is quite interesting. You can go the other way too, making realistic images from paintings. Here I've got a different prompt, so I'm asking for a cinematic photo style, and I've got an input image that is a painting of an angel. In this case, the denoise of 0.75 was actually okay, and I found it typically tends towards photorealism. With image to image, you aren't limited to just changing styles, and of course you can prompt for whatever you want, with the results being loosely based on your chosen picture. So here I've got a denoise of 0.91, so quite high. I'm asking for an oil painting of a woman standing in front of a beaver, and there we've got the input image. The result then looks pretty good. We've got, you know, basically the composition. Now, the denoise there is on 0.91, and that is about as high as you can go. But we've got the beaver, he's making his dam, and we've even got the text in there as well. As we've seen, even though we don't have things such as control nets, even a basic image to image can give you some degree of composition control. Now, this is all very well and good, but can we do more things? Well, yes, yes we can, but we'll have to invite some AI friends. This workflow is very similar, but instead we're getting an AI to do the prompting for us. Welcome to Florence. Florence is a lovely small AI which looks at images and can tell us stuff about them. It can do things other than captioning. If you look down here, we've got task, 
you crack that open and there's all sorts of things, region captioning and segmentation it can do, document Q&A, all sorts of stuff. But today we're just interested in Florence looking at the image and then providing a text description. In this basic form, you can essentially avoid having to type anything, as Florence will do that for you via these two simple nodes. Unfortunately, once again, the nickname is mistaken here. So for the Florence nodes, you should instead install this one I've got here, ID number 267, ComfyUI-Florence2. The first node, Download and Load Florence 2 model, will, as the name suggests, automatically download and load your selected model. The second one, Florence 2 Run, has the task set to more detailed caption. And you can see we've just got the caption output connected. That goes up to the clip texting code, which goes up to form the T5XXL input. You can connect it to clip L as well, but I tend to just put random style tags in there myself. And that's it. Now it will do the prompting for you. Down here at the bottom, I've also connected a show text node. So that is the prompt it's generated. The image is a painting of a large circular fountain in the center of a mountainous landscape and loads of other stuff as well. As we saw at the beginning, I think the output is really cool. And that's 0.85 denoise as well. So we're putting in that original input, like in image to image, getting Florence to do the prompting for us. And now we can have loads and loads of different variations of whatever your input image is. Using an empty latent or setting the denoise to one will net you an image based on the text alone. This will be very different to your input image, but also should be fairly similar thanks to the long and descriptive prompt. If you're not having fun yet, how about a party? It's an LLM party, uh, literally. That's where this set of custom nodes came from, Comfy UI LLM party. Got some Comfy Roll Studio in there too, and a simple text input as primitives are a bit limited, but all nice and straightforward. Now this can do a whole bunch of things, including automatic random prompting. So hold on to your hat as this has a couple of bits to it. With LLM Party, you can connect to, yes, you've guessed it, a whole bunch of large language models. I like to run everything locally, so I went with the Olama option. Olama is really easy to install and has a cute logo. Just one command, even on Microsoft Windows. On Linux, at least, it installs as a service, so you don't really need to do much else other than pick a model or two. Take a look at the table below those installation instructions and they give you some great starting examples and sizes of the various models. To download a model, just run Olama pull and then the name of the model you want. So for example, in this command, I'm going to pull the Llama 3.1 model. There we go. Now you can also use it to update as well. As you can see there, I ran it again and it just compared and got only the differences. Whichever model you picked, use that same name in the node. Like you can see here, I've got model name set to Llama 3.1. The node next to it here, the API large language model, is the one that does the magic. The text in this little box is the system prompt. Being an LLM, you can put anything you want in there. So basically, I'm attempting to emulate an art critic. I know, right? Who'd want to do that? Anyway, much like with Florence, this will also output a prompt, which you can view in the little box next to it. Because you can do so many things with this, I've also added a couple of switches for the prompts. Going in the text input switch, you've got Florence or user input. And then going out, you've got LLM enhanced, which is the output from this the Florence one directly or the user input. Still with me? We've basically got two LLMs now. Yes, I know there's an image input. I'll probably get around to playing with that at some point. But basically, we've got a picture describer and a prompt enhancer. Cool. Now let's see what it can do. Not a bad output. I like how it's got the books in the background. Very cool. And of course, you can see the prompt down at the bottom here which is very descriptive. That's on 0.85 denoise, so it's fairly similar to the original. Let's just zoom out so you can see the whole thing. So there you go, an AI enhanced image to image.
This time I've increased the denoise to 0.95 to ensure a large change and used a totally different image, which I think has also come out nicely. We'll have a little zoom in on there. So yeah, that is a, a very good looking statue. If you've got text in your image, then Florence is also pretty good at detecting that too, even if the sign isn't very good text in the first place, like in this case. The resulting rodent there, of course, makes the sign a lot better. The other thing you can do, now you've got an LLM powering your prompts, is to totally change the way you prompt. No longer do you actually have to describe an image because you can just ask for the prompt to be written for you. In this instance, I'm not using an image at all. I'm just going with the user input. So I've got that input switch set to two and I'm just asking for some random mythological beast, dinosaur hybrid, eating a burger. The prompt text has come up with that. And if we have a little look up here, there is the final generation. So as you can see, it's added a big title at the top, the Burger Beast. And there I've got my strange hybrid thing eating a burger. All right, not bad. If that isn't enough, check this one out. So here I'm just asking for a random inspirational quote inside a glass display case. So obviously here, I don't know what the quote is going to be. It's just going to make up a quote for me and put it inside a glass display case. There so is innovate like no one. OK, I'm sure you've got plenty of ideas, but you could do something like something really random as your custom prompt. Set it up to 100 generations and then come back to a Pandora's box of oddities. So whether you're diving in to add any of these nodes to your own workflows or downloading the exact ones used in this video from my Patreon, hopefully you'll come up with something epic. Ooh, nerdy rodent. He really makes my day. Showing us AI in a really British way.